getting into our English part of the broadcast. Yes, this is the British portion of the broadcast. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Julian Fellows, and I asked you, Julian, do I call you Lord, Sir, Hey You? I think we can allow you to call me Julian. Julian. No! Yes. No! We'll I, I don't think too much will come uh, crashing down. Yes, uh, okay, but I'm you are Lord it. Julian Fellows. No, right? I'm not really. That's oh. a modern thing. I'm Lord Fellows. Oh, you're Lord because Fellows. Because if I was Lord Julian Fellows, I'd be the younger son of a Marquis or a Duke. But Fellows I think that might take up the show if okay. we go any further. As a matter of fact, we're out of time. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Lord Fellows. All right, Julian Fellows is with us. He created the indelible Downton Abbey, recently finished the sixth and final season. Among the performers likely to be nominated for Emmy Awards for the show, it's a little known actress you uh, don't know and have never worked with, <laughs> named Maggie Smith. <laughs> I believe in rules and traditions and playing our part. But there is something else. And what is that, pray? I believe in love. I mean, brilliant careers, rich lives, are seldom led without... Just an element of love. Oh, how fantastic. That's the most Maggie. humane thing said in that, you know, all six years, right there. No, they were, they were very good together, actually, Maggie and Michelle, because they both had this uh, quite similar quality that they didn't mind being disliked. Mm -hmm. they, you, they could play a situation in which they were antipathetic and they both had very layered performances so they could go between being quite funny, mm -hmm. uh, in Maggie's case, you know, very funny, but she could then be very moving. Two, two minutes later, not many people can do that. How did you know that it was time to say goodbye? Because <laughs> well, so many people didn't want it to end. I, you know, it's always nice to leave a party when people are still sorry to see you For go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and not sobbing with relief Amen. when the door closes. Yeah. And um, the young ones, you know, had come for the most part unknown into the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, Laura, who, who played Edith, was her first job. Can you imagine? No. And now all the newspapers tell them they're stars, but they have to find out if they are stars. Mm -hmm. It's time for them to go out leave and. The next and even what? Leave the nest. Leave the nest. Let them fly. Let them fly. And, and I understand that. And I think even for the older ones, you know, six years is quite a long time in showbiz. You yeah. know, uh, you get a sort of almost the feeling you're doing a real job, you know, after six years. And so I think they were pretty happy to, to see what happens. I mean, there may yet be a film, you know, this big uh, thing. Is there going to be a film? I mean, I think it's quite likely there will be a film, and I think we'd all do it. So let, me, let, let, let me stop you. You wrote every word of the six years. I did. What is with you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's not... I don't want to sound as if I think it, that's clever and having a writing room isn't. I really admire uh, the writing room. Uh -huh. I mean, um, Matthew Weiner, who does... Mad, Mad Men, Men, and he runs the writing room of Mad Men. And for me, the achievement is that Mad Men, which I adored actually, had such a distinctive style. Mm -hmm. You could never tell that mm -hmm. anyone else had worked on it. Now, that's a real skill, and, and yeah. I would love to feel, if ever I was in that same position, of having to produce many more episodes, yeah. that I'd be able to do it. Julian, I was telling you, I remember you when you were an actor looking for work here in Hollywood I was. Back, back in the early 80s. T talk about that time. Well, um, I arrived in order to be a film star as mm -hmm. quickly as possible. Yes. I as many do. I wanted to be the new Peter Ustinov, the new Robert Morley. I had it all uh, sewn up. When I tell you uh, that the high point of that stay was when I came second to replace the dwarf on Fantasy Island. That's exactly right. Uh, you'll realize it didn't go entirely according to plan. You lost out to Villa Chase, uh, then you lost out to another Brit. I, I lost out to another Brit. Yeah. And he, he came in and I'm sure was very good. He was. But um, at that uh -huh. moment, I did slightly realized that I might have to re-examine the <laughs> campaign plan and in fact I started getting offered much more work in England you know and I would fly back and forth and back and forth and finally I thought God is trying to tell me that I'm supposed to be in yeah. England. Were you always writing even then? No, no I didn't really. I wrote a couple when I was very young at drama school I wrote a couple of sort of bodice rippers novels, you know, to be read on trains mm. and uh, just to prove I could but you then were, I didn't write anything. You were in years. Footlights. Wow. I was in Footlights. Footlights is that yeah, thing yeah. I always talk about that the every, Cambridge, every great mm -hmm. British performer comes out of it mm -hmm. somehow or other. Yes, although actually I came after 
um, uh, you know, the famous kind of John Cleese lot, and before, before Stephen Fry and, and Emma, Emma yeah. Thompson. So we were sort of the bread between the pate, you know. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I don't think my generation produced anyone famous at all. Well, please. Oh. Yeah. All right. Uh, what does that say it again? Say it again? Oh, you have an app? Oh, God. You're here for an app? How clever you are. Well, okay. I'm, I'm sort of in How a way here are. for an app. I've done this thing of writing a novel called Belgravia. And um, it is a novel, but, the, but the, what attracted me to the idea was that Arad was going to, instead of just publishing it, they were going to release the book with one chapter a week, oh. one episode a week, like Charles Dickens, of course, really, a sort of 19th century, but released on the internet for your app. I, no. I love to use that word as if I knew Pleasure. what it meant. You are down uh, with it. You are down with it, you Lord. You are downton with it. No, yes. I'm just so with it. And, um, and then you go on the app and you <laughs> meet the characters and on look the, at yeah. family trees and go around the houses That's I cool. based the houses in the story on and so on. And then... Um, I suppose you then get to know them all much better and you read it on your okay. iPlayer and your iPhone Very and good. your iPhone. Before iPhone. you go, because you've got so many things going, your apps and everything else, School of Rock, the yeah. musical? School of Rock. Yes. Yes. No, I was thrilled to do that. I mean, that was about the opposite end of the planet. That's for sure. From Downton. And Andrew Lloyd Webber asked me to do it. Yes. He had... He bought the rights to the film, and, and um, kind of it was a very exciting job, actually, and very good fun, very nice team working on it. The kids were great. He's great. Do you, by the way, forgive people for saying Downtown Abbey? Well, not because I see it's on the front of every American bus. <laughs> so, obviously, they make that link. <laughs> the bus is going downtown. Uh, yeah. Can't tell you what a pleasure it was. Thank, Thank you so nice much. Thank you. Nice to meet you.